Welcome to week 13 of lockdown and to our whole school assembly. Today we're going to be looking at valuing yourselves and valuing others. As you can see from the news at the moment, there's been quite prominent features around valuing yourself and looking out for other people. We as staff are going to go through some topics that have been quite prolific in the news at the moment and how they are affecting others and what we can do to support others at this time. Let me introduce you to Dr Bauer. Now Dr Bauer has looked at two topical media stories that are currently in the news at the moment and she wanted to look at how you can use your voice to value yourself and value others. Hi, I want to talk to you today about finding your voice. In the news, uh, what I've been looking about is um, Marcus Rashford. So he, a lot of you know, is a 22-year-old England football player who is currently using his voice and making a change. So um, you just watch this video. As I'm going through now, I once had to go through that um, same system and it's very difficult to, to find a way out, but... Um, now that I'm in this position that I'm in, it's, it's very important for me to, to help the people that are struggling and um, that was the main reason why the letter was, was written and you know my mum, she done, she done the best she could, I remember we used to go to a shop called um, Pound World and everything was under a pound and you know we'd sort of schedule out the week so we'd get seven yoghurts and you can have one yoghurt a day and, and so on so she, she done the best she could within the circumstances. But there's some families out there like me that have four or five kids, so it's literally impossible for, for her to, to, to take control of the situation. You know, that this is all going on at a time where kids should be concentrating on schoolwork and, and stuff like that. And it's just crazy to think that this, this is still going on at this, you know, we're in 2020 now and it's just something that I don't believe should be, should be happening. Something I, I wonder when I, when I read the letter, when you were growing up, do you remember being hungry? Yeah, of course. Um, but I also understood. Um, maybe it was just part of me growing up. I, I, I just knew how hard that my mum was working. Anyway, so, you know, I'd never moan, I'd never do anything. If there's food on the table, there's food on the table. If there's not, I, I had friends that understood my same situation. And maybe it was possible for me to go to their house, get some food or whatever. I know that you've written this letter from the heart. Tell me what you hope you might be able to achieve. Well, basically, I'm just hoping that the government make a make a U-turn on on the decision to to stop the free free meal vouchers, and and I'm just hoping they do it as soon as possible. Really, I know they've they've mentioned that they usually do this, um, you know, this time of year, summer holidays, but because of because of COVID, the situation's been completely different for for everyone in the world. So, um, you know, circumstances change. So I think, you know, for at least summer holidays. <laughs> They have to be, in a, be, in, be willing to, to make that decision to, to go back on themselves. Um, he is famous, but that's not necess necessary all the time to hear your voice. It does make it easier, but I wanted to also show you somebody else in the news who um, is um, Hassan. He is a Syri Syrian refugee. Uh, he used to be an English teacher um, back home and he's was working as a hospital cleaner and saw things that he wasn't happy about and through social media he made changes. Prime Minister, my name is Hassana Ad and I am proudly working as a cleaner in a hospital 10 miles away from the hospital which you were in. I joined around the same time actually because I wanted to help this nation overcome this pandemic. Um, I've been really enjoying the clapping that you and your fellow ministers and the government do every week. Today, however, I felt uh, betrayed, stabbed in the back. I felt shocked to find out that you've decided, your government decided to exclude myself and my colleagues who work as cleaners and porters and uh, Social care workers who are, uh, we are all on minimum wage, you've decided to exclude us from the bereavement scheme. So if I die fighting coronavirus, my partner isn't allowed for it, isn't allowed an indefinite leave to remain. This is your way of saying thank you. 
to us. Now, uh, I'm sending you this message hoping that you will reconsider. Because I did see a humble Boris after you were discharged from hospital. I saw a different Boris. So, us migrants are on the front line doing these very demanding jobs to help this nation overcome this pandemic. And the least you can do, if we die, to give our families indefinite leave to remain. Please reconsider. And I hope to hear back from you. Thank you. As you can see, two very dominant features of the news at the moment and two which we can really use in terms of understanding what the words valuing others means. Now, these two have been very inspirational in terms of their media coverage, but they've done it in the right way. And that is what we try to learn as we go through society. How can we do things the right way to impact in a most positive and effective way? Now we're going to move on to looking at the next story. And Miss Davis is going to start us off by having a look at something that's very, very uh, recent and something that's made a big, big change to most people. So my part of the assembly today is completely different compared to the one that I did for you guys two weeks ago, I'll be honest. However, this topic is so, so relevant at the moment as it's in the news, not only nationally, but on a global scale. It's completely important that we get a better understanding about what is going on and have those difficult and sensitive conversations that we may not have had before with our friends and our families. I was a little bit nervous about doing this topic for our assembly today, but I believe it's incredibly important that we do have a, a better understanding, have those difficult conversations and do something going forward to support one another. I'm sure you've been watching the news about what's been happening in the US and the UK about the protests and what is Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a foundation founded in 2013 in the response to the murder of Trayvon Martins, a 17-year-old black African-American who was returning to his father's home after going to the local convenience store. Neighbourhood Watch accused Martins of acting suspiciously. Black Lives Matter's mission is to eradicate white supremacy and to build local power to intervene on the violence that is inflicted on black communities. Due to the recent events that sadly seen George Floyd lose his life fighting for breath, the BLM movement have heightened their campaigns to bring social justice and equality for all to a global scale. You will now watch a series of short films that highlight the history of the civil rights movements across America during the 20th century. Nearly a century after the end of the Civil War and the dawn of Reconstruction, African Americans still found themselves fighting for their basic rights as citizens. The modern civil rights movement in the mid 20th century finally secured them. Most historians actually date the start of the formal civil rights movement to Brown versus Board of Education. Brown really stokes the fervor of the nation. Then, in December of 1955, Rosa Parks decided as an act of resistance that she would not give up her seat to a white man on the bus. Rosa Parks' deliberate act of resistance led to a bus boycott that thrust into the limelight a young preacher with a PhD. He would become one of the movement's most charismatic leaders. His name was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. One of the most iconic moments is the March on Washington in 1963, led by Martin Luther King Jr. 200,000 people converge on the nation's capital to rally for civil rights. They come united in one cause. One day right now in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. This becomes visualized on the news and begins to change the way that Americans are starting to think about the civil rights movement. As the civil rights movement attained greater visibility, it was often met with increased brutality and violence. Yet in the midst of so much sacrifice and heartbreak, the work of civil rights activists began to bear fruit. In 1964, President Lyndon Johnson signs the Civil Rights Act of 64, and that's designed to desegregate businesses and government employment. And then in 1965, President Johnson signs the Voting Rights Act of 65. The passage of the Voting Rights Act 
was a monumental victory for African Americans. Tragically, just three years after it was passed, Dr. King would be assassinated. Many feel looking back that the movement died that day. But in fact, the movement took on new forms and continued. And it must continue today as important victories such as the Voting Rights Act are under attack. Until we deal with the fact that the backlash is often made possible, not just by the other side growing in power, but by those who claim to care about equality losing their own resolve, there will be moments of this cycle happening over and over again. It's not just America where segregation and racial inequality was taking place. Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for his leadership in the protests against segregationist policies of non-white citizens, known as apartheid. Two of the policies stated that black and whites were to live in separate areas and use different public spaces. Apartheid in South Africa crumbled after Nelson Mandela walked to freedom. But black people suffered decades of government-backed injustice before it did. Apartheid really began in 1948 but separating black Africans from the white minority had long been a policy aim. Laws made white people officially superior and the large black majority faced discrimination in every aspect of their lives. Living, doing business or owning land in white areas was banned. There were separate public facilities, transport and schools. Interracial marriage was banned. Many had no right to citizenship and were regarded as aliens in major cities. The UK was also involved in slavery during the 18th century. Racism wasn't made illegal in Britain until 1965, that's only 55 years ago. Sadly, racism has been occurring well before 1919 and it's still happening today in the 21st century. I'm sure many of you have also been watching the news and witnessing the protests that have been happening across the country. A movement has started across the world as an act of peaceful protesting. It is known as taking a knee. This type of protesting began in the NFL after San Francisco's 49ers quarterback, Colin Kaepernick, sat during the national anthem of his pre-season game in 2016. This gesture was to indicate his anger at the racial injustice in the US. He later decided to kneel during the national anthem so that he could pay his respects to the military that were fighting for his country. You can see him in the centre of the picture at the top right of your screen. What next? What can we do? Well, actually, there's so many things that we can be doing. We can start by educating ourselves to get a better understanding of the current affairs and what is happening not only in the UK, but across the globe. I know Mrs Broadus has got many ideas that she would like to share with you later on. We can start by also signing petitions, donating to local charities. We can also help each other with our friends and our families and have those conversations that are so desperately needed. As I conclude my part of the assembly, I just want you to think about this. We all come into the world the same way. We all eat, breathe and drink the same. People are taught how to hate others. So let's teach others how to love, appreciate and respect each other's values, beliefs and cultures. Life would be a pretty boring place if we didn't have our own identity. We live in a culturally diverse community, so have conversations, learn new things and embrace them all. We are, of course, a race, but there is only one race that we are all a part of, and that is the human race. So please go and have those conversations, do things to support your communities, and I'm sure Mrs Borders has plenty of opportunities that you can do to improve your knowledge and understanding. So a big thank you to Miss Davis for educating us on the Black Lives Matter topic. And as you can see, quite a large amount of society are getting involved in this, whether that's the Premier League and taking the knee that's on every Premier League game that's been currently played and watched so far. Now, what we'd like to move on to is how we can link this to Croxy Dane School. So Miss Broadis is going to show us how we can do that. Hi, everybody. Thanks to Miss Davis for that explanation of what's been going on in the world with regarding the death of George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and the protests we've seen. Sometimes it's easy to feel quite helpless and not know how to respond as an individual. And, uh, and I think that's where books can help us. I popped into Croxley Danes earlier in the week and I 
chose some of the books that we have that I think can help us understand and grow in empathy for people whose lives can be different from our own. And so here on the table, I've got a selection of the books that we have at school. Um, and I'd just like to talk you through a few. First of all, this book, Noughts and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. It was recently made into a TV adaptation and I think it's still available on iPlayer. It's a really good look at how prejudice against the black community has existed over the years and this book turns it on its head and it puts black people into the position that white people have enjoyed and it really really helps for white people to see what the world can feel like for black people and so I really recommend Noughts and Crosses it's a great read and it can really help us understand another good book and you can see just how damaged this book is simply because it's been read by so many pupils who've enjoyed it. It's Ghost Boys, Jewel Parker Rhodes, and it tells the story. It's by an author who was horrified by a shooting of a young boy, a young black boy in the United States, who was playing with a toy gun in the street and the police mistook him for um, a terrorist. And he was shot dead. He was just a young, young boy. And she decided to put his story into the form of a novel and each chapter flips with him being a ghost and speaking about his life with real life and somebody who meets him as a ghost and sees the world through his eyes. Really, really good read, I recommend that one. Then there are some books about the experience of being an immigrant. And so we've got this one here by Zaina Freylon. And we have another one here by Bally Ray and we have another one here by Catherine Bruton and all of these can help us understand what it's like for people who live in this country and for whom this country doesn't feel like home straight away and finally here is another one about immigration it helps tell the story of the Windrush generation that you might have heard about Andrea Levi she writes about in novel form but of the experiences of her parents who came across from the Caribbean and were for some of the first black people in London after the Second World War. And I really think that books can help us. They can help us deepen our understanding. They can help broaden the empathy that we have for people. And I think altogether we can read ourselves out of ignorance and into having more understanding, more empathy for the people around us. Thanks. Once again, a big thank you to all the staff that got themselves involved in today's assembly and have educated you and others about the wider community and what's going on in the news at the moment. To conclude, I would like us to think about five key points from what we can take from today's assembly. And that's about valuing yourself and valuing others. So the first point is to not compare yourselves to others and to think about what you're doing and how positive that is. The second one is don't settle for anything better than your best. Keep working hard and strive for those goals. My third one is to start appreciating everything you've got around you, whether that's the food that you eat or the bed that you sleep in. The fourth one is to have healthy relationships, whether that's online or at home. And the fifth and final one is find that dedication to every day and every moment to make sure you are happy and appreciating everything that goes on. So from me and all the staff, have a lovely week and keep learning.